Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa, and we're live from the Stanford Museum and Nature Center. We're going to introduce you guys to some of our farm babies. Um, we're happy to say a nice shout out to all of our friends of Vantage Point viewers. I know normally we get to come to visit you guys this summer down at Anish Party Cottage, um, but with everything going on, instead we're going to give you sort of a behind the scenes tour of our babies. Now, some of our babies such as these guys were born all the way in March, so it's really hard to look at them now in June and see, or July I guess it is now, um, and see how big they are because they do grow really fast. One of the things that happens with farm babies is that most farm babies are an adult by the time they hit their first birthday, which means they're gonna grow a whole lot faster than you and I or any little kids that you may have at home. So you can probably guess that right now we are in our sheep barn. And if you take a look around, you can see a couple different types of sheep. Um, you can tell pretty well by their horns or their lack of horns, as well as their colors. So this friend right here is my friend Punky. She gets her name because her, hor her horns are a little funky. Um, and Punky and some of the other friends here are called Jacob sheep. They're one of our heritage breeds, which is basically like an endangered species for farm animals. For some reason, these particular breeds were really popular on New England farms hundreds of years ago, and they sort of have declined. Um, Jacob sheep are really pretty. They have this sort of uh, almost like a Dalmatian color to them, black and gray and some brown. Um, the does, or does, the ewes, sorry, can have up to four horns. Um, and the rams can actually have up to six, ours has three. Um, and we, if you notice, also have a couple different types of sheep. So back in the corner over there, one of our larger sheep um, is our friend Georgia. And Georgia is a Suffolk sheep. So uh, we oftentimes will tell people that farm animals are a lot like dogs. They come in different breeds and those breeds have different sizes, different shapes and different colors um, to the fur on their body. That works the same way with our sheep. So we actually had a few um, lambs that were born here this year. And if you look around, you might be able to see them. But as I said, these were the first babies that were born on the farm this year. And it's a little bit challenging um, to be able to find them. So we have one right here, um, who is one of our Jacob sheep. We had um, two uh, lark and crow. Um, this year, our theme was birds. Um, and then if you can see way in the back, the two fully dark sheep, believe it or not, are actually our first babies of the season. They're almost as big as mom at this point um, because they're about three months old, but this is Magpie and Raven uh, who were born to mom Georgia um, towards the end of March. So they get pretty big, um, pretty fast. Now you'll notice that the adults have all had their haircuts. So another thing that happens here besides babies in the spring is that we do our shearing on our um, alpacas, our llamas, and our sheep usually around the second week of May, um, to be able to take the wool off for processing. Um, you guys have probably heard of lamb's wool before. Sometimes people will do uh, shearing on uh, the lambs, um, the first one as well. Um, we're gonna wait till they're a little bigger and do that in May as well. So these don't really look too much like babies. Thankfully, we have some other friends that are a little younger that are gonna seem a little bit more like babies. So we're gonna actually take a little um, view around here um, and kind of pop into different barns and show you guys all of our friends that were here on the farm. One of the other babies that we had, again, it's so hard at this time of year to imagine that these are babies, but are our ducklings. Um, our ducklings are actually almost grown at this point. If you take a look, it would be hard to see that these are actually babies, but they still are. Um, as you notice, his, uh, apparently this one has a little bit of a, a sore throat from um, trying to quack all day. But these guys have not quite gotten their big kid voices yet, so they're sort of in between a peep, which they make when they're really young, um, and a quack. And he does still have some of his baby feathers, which we call down feathers. Um, I like to also call them bird long underwear. So birds especially grow up really fast. Ducks are pretty much adults by the time they're six months old, um, because one of the things that makes ducks that are born, or even chickens or turkeys that are born on a farm, a little different than a lot of birds born in the wild is that they're in their egg for a longer period of time. So if you guys have gotten a chance to see robins or other birds in the wild hatch out, you might have seen that when their eggs hatch, the babies don't have any feathers on their body. Often their eyes aren't open and they really are pretty helpless. Mom and dad have to feed them and keep them warm. On the farm, because it's sort of been designed for these animals to grow up with farmer's help, not necessarily with moms and dads, uh, these guys are actually in their egg for 28 days, which means that by the time that they hatch, they are precocial, 
which means that they have their feathers, they already have their eyes open, or at least they have their baby feather, I should say. Their eyes are already open, they're able to move around, and as long as the farmers show them where their food and water is, they can actually feed and water themselves within a couple hours of birth, and they don't need to have mom and dad around to be able to care for them, as long as the farmers are making sure that they have food and water, uh, which we do every day, uh, multiple times a day, then these guys are able to grow up without the help of mom and dad specifically. In the wild, if that happens, a lot of times ducks will imprint, which means that a duck's gonna think it's a person, which seems kind of silly, but on the farm, thankfully, that doesn't happen. So these guys are actually just getting ready to be able to uh, move to a bigger space. So what we do with our ducks once they're born, um, and they're a little bigger and they start to get their big feathers. Um, we give them smaller spaces to be able to swim so they can practice. And then after a while, they'll get to be free range, which means they're gonna have the ability to go on the pond, to be able to walk around. Um, they can free browse on all of the different uh, puddles and ponds that we have here, as well as they get some corn and such um, available to them twice a day if they wanna come up to the feed house. So that's pretty similar to most of our baby birds. Um, the ducks were the only baby birds that we had born um, this year on the farm. Oftentimes we have chicks um, or baby um, guinea fowl, which we call keats, or sometimes even um, geese, which are goslings, or swans, which are cygnets. Um, but just ducklings this year, we have about 15 that were born here on the farm, and they are also about um, two to three months old, depending. We had two different hatches um, as we go through. So these guys will be out and about pretty soon um, and walking around and checking out who else we have on the farm. So we're going to get to visit yet another baby. And this one is actually something that is a term that you guys are probably pretty familiar with. We have lots of really cool baby words on the farm. Um, if we have a cow, it would be a calf or a horse would be a foal. So the next baby we're going to visit is actually the same thing that we get called when we're kids which is a kid. Okay, so as I said, our next friends are the same word that we are called when we're babies um, or when we're young, which is a kid. So you may have guessed that a kid is a baby goat. Probably our most popular um, babies on the farm are our kids. And this year is no exception. We actually had five different kids that were born on the farm. Um, one of whom, two of whom were born to my friend right here. Um, this is Sweet Pea. She is an Oberhasley goat, uh, which is a new breed of goat that we have here. And she gave birth to the first um, goat kids of the season, which were twins. So this is our friend Ash and Violet, um, again, who are pretty big. Uh, they may be hard to tell apart. Um, right now we can tell Violet because she has a violet colored collar, which helps out. And Ash has a green collar, which works with their name. Um, but you can also tell because Ash has a little bit more black now, whereas our lambs um, were birds for their theme, for our goats, we did flowers for girls and trees for boys. Now, four out of the five kids that we had this year were girls, which is a little bit unusual. So Ash was our only boy, so he's our only tree name. Um, but again, we have Violet, and then we also have two other friends here. This is my friend Granny Gray. Granny Gray is a different type of goat. She is called a Pygora goat. Um, and these are a fiber goat. You can see they have a really, really pretty uh, fur coat, sort of. Um, oftentimes people think that they're sheep, but they're not. And Grady Rachel had a set of twins this year. So back here is her friend B, who's a little bit lighter. And then somewhere around here is her sister, um, Carnation, who has a little bit more gray. Oh, she's peeking through the little uh, the inside the stall. So these two twins were born um, a little bit after Violet and Ash. And twins, or sometimes even triplets, are actually really common here on the farm. Um, did read once, not at this farm, thankfully, but one uh, farm we saw, I think, in Europe had a goat that had eight kids at once, which is very crazy. Um, these guys often have a lot of work just taking care of two um, or even three. So eight, I can't even imagine how that would go. Now, our youngest kid that we had um, is actually just a couple weeks old and was born to my friend Delilah here, who's coming to visit our camera person. Uh, Delilah is a Pygora, uh, sorry, a pig, dwarf Nigerian, I can't think today. Dwarf Nigerian goat, who is our smallest goat breed that we have. Um, as their name implies, they're a little bit of a smaller breed and they originated in Africa. They're great um, farm goats because they've got really good personalities. They're actually great milkers um, and they're exceptionally good moms. Delilah is actually no exception. Delilah was born my first year here on the farm, which is 10 summer ago. 
say 11 summers ago at this point. Um, and so this year she had our little friend, um, Lilac, who also had a little purple color. So you can see that looks a little bit more like a kid. We kind of forget how small they are every year. So Lilac is just about three weeks old. Um, as you can see, uh, Delilah is very good at making sure that none of the other bigger babies um, get towards her uh, at all. So these guys are actually still nursing. Even the older ones will nurse for maybe another month or so. Um, and Lilac will nurse for a couple of months and then they will be separated. Um, typically the girl kids can stay with moms. Um, the boys usually will end up going um, up with dads. But a lot of our goats end up going to other farms. So if you guys at home really want some goats, you can give us a call. You can have some goats um, as pets or animals in your yard. They're really good at uh, mowing lawns and we always recommend that you get more of them because goats are extraordinary. So uh, one of the other things that's really cool, not necessarily about babies, but that I love about goats that we can check out here are their eyes. So if you've ever taken a close look at your eyeballs, um, we know that on the inside of our eyes, they are round. Um, goats actually have rectangular eyeballs, or at least on the pupils on the inside, and that's really important. It helps them to be able to have great peripheral or sideways vision. So oftentimes in the wild, goats are going to live in mountain areas or hill areas, and they really need to be able to see around them, especially if they're browsing, so that nobody comes and bothers them or tries to eat them for dinner. So these guys don't have to worry about that, but they still have those same adaptations or tools that the wild goats have to help them do that, which is pretty cool. And as we said, um, the kids are probably our favorite babies of the season, but we were really lucky to also have a newer baby that was born. And this baby is just about um, two weeks old. So we're gonna go and make our last stop this baby who is pretty cute and also actually has one of the coolest baby names um, in all of the park. All right, so here is our newest baby. We're super excited to welcome Tazmika to the farm. Um, Taz, as we're calling her, is a baby llama, and the word for a baby llama is a kriya. So she was born to mom Summer, um, who is actually on loan from our friends at Rowanwood Farm in Newtown, um, and they are hanging out with our normal llama friends, Coco, who is a little bit of a pushy aunt, um, and Mia, who's actually her daughter. So Tavika was born here on the farm. Um, she is about three weeks old. So she is pretty cute um, and is learning to explore with mom Summer um, as she goes through. So we're pretty excited to welcome her and she is going to be here on the farm through the summer. Um, and then we'll probably go back with her mom to Rowanwood um, back in the fall. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering if you can come and see these friends in person, and you can't. So currently, uh, the Stanford Museum and Nature Center is open to the public. You do not have to make reservations. Um, you can come in as regular admission um, through our North Gate, which is at 151 Schofield Town Road. Um, it's the new entrance if you guys have been here. And you are welcome to come in and visit everybody. So currently the farm, our trails, our playground, and all of our outside spaces are open. Um, and then our, the only inside space that's currently open right now is our um, exhibit galleries, which actually have an amazing um, art, uh, which will be running through September. So we hope that you guys will come and visit us in person. Um, but for now, we'll say thank you for joining us from Extra Farm. <laughs> Uh, our llamas definitely are trying to get some selfies in here um, as we go through. And again, you can also visit our website at stanfordmuseum.org for information on programs, on hours, and all of that stuff. But for now, we'll say thank you to our friends, um, fr friends of Greenwich Point. We hope that you and guys enjoyed seeing our little babies, and we hope to see everybody really soon.